What is going on guys welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here today I am back with another Destiny 2 video and today we're going to talk about the news from the past few days or so including what could be E3 leaked information on the name of the next major expansion for Destiny 2. But before we get into it guys, if you'd like to support the channel, hitting that like button truly helps me out and I do appreciate that support. Okay, so firstly, let's check out the main points in my opinion behind yesterday's Bungie weekly update. So firstly, they talk about power level progress. Now there have been a few unhappy people with the way the system works now and how it's so hard to get past that certain point. Here is what Bungie had to say powerful progress feedback never stops from the moment warmind landed we've had our eyes on the chatter surrounding all aspects of destiny 2. one trending topic is how players reach appropriate power levels for end game content senior investment designer daniel oh, 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 i can't even pronounce that has some details on what to expect moving forward daniel Warman is out, we're super excited this is in your hands now as we're able to get a bunch of excellent input on what we did well and what we still need to work on. One of those areas I'd like to talk about a bit is progression. I spoke a little about this before their Warmind launch but I think one thing I could be more clear about was the Warmind progression system is an improvement over Curse of Osiris but still not where we ultimately want it to end up. It's a step down the road to make the game more in line with where we want it but we need to make these iterations one step at a time so we can incorporate feedback and ensure we're heading in the right direction. Heroic Strikes are a great example of something we definitely want to keep iterating on. In the May 29th update you'll see a small change to help make these better. Escalation protocol key fragments will become a 100% drop chance from each heroic strike. The goal here is to make getting these fragments more accessible while also preserving the need to go play non-open world content to get the fragments. Heroic strikes will be able to drop better rewards. Every 3 to 5 heroic strikes will drop a legendary that can carry you up to 360 power before Muzz. This should better align the rewards of heroic strikes with the difficulty of the activity and help solo players have a more reliable source of upgrades. We won't have any time to make changes to what's coming on May 29th, but please let us know how you feel about these rates. It is good information to inform future updates. We're tracking some additional issues that don't have immediate solutions. But that's what I want to bring up as things we're thinking and talking about. I don't currently have any potential solutions to talk about, but I want to make sure we're communicating the kinds of things we're looking at and considering. In the spirit, here are some of the tart progression related issues we're thinking about right now. How to smooth out the transition into the end game grind once the campaign is over. Currently there is a brick wall players seem to be run into at 345, where progression goes from fast to super frictioned. This is one of those areas we definitely don't believe is perfect, so we're looking at how to smooth this transaction out. Once milestones are complete, there are rewards to chase. Exotic masterworks and seasonal ranks help this problem a little bit, giving some amount of manpower chase to work on once milestones are done, but these definitely aren't enough. As highlighted in the roadmap, weapon randomization and records should also give players more to do once their milestones are done. That doesn't mean we believe this is a fully solved problem, and we're talking about other ways to help mitigate this. End game progression needs more tiers. Right now, everything gives similar size upgrades without discrete tiers, in the progression system for players to climb to, so they can tackle new activities and in turn climb a new tier with new activities. This is something I definitely wouldn't expect a solution for prior to September, but it is on our radar. The quality of rewards don't always match the difficulty of the activity. We're seeing a lot of this feedback around red layer rewards in particular. So talking about how to better align with the quality of reward and the difficulty of the activity is something we're going to be thinking about more going forward. So for those of you struggling to reach A365, heroic strikes will drop certain items which will assist you there. But they admit the power level is far from perfect and it is way way off. But I'm glad they are addressing or trying to address it. They're then going to speak about PvP and going for glory. Now for me, I'd love to try and grind for the Redrix's Claymore, but solo queuing in competitive is just absolutely pointless. Here is what they say about this and the general issues many are having. Progression isn't just achieving new levels of power. We also look at how players are rising through ranks of Valor and Glory. We've gotten some questions on hows and whys of the ranking system. PvP Design League Derek Carroll has some answers, quoting Derek right here. Now that we've added a serious ranking system to the competitive playlist, we're seeing many more Guardians attempt to climb the ladder to become legend. On their way to the top, some players have raised questions that we can address here. Question. 
Why would I match against a player with a higher glory rank than me? Answer, for a variety of reasons, we don't match directly on your glory number, instead using our per playlist skill value, it's quite likely that your opponent is a good match against you, but they've been grinding glory more consistently, so they've moved up the ranks faster, take this as a sign that you'll likely reach that rank with continued play. Question, why can't I match against preformed fire teams when I'm searching as a solo player? Answer, after a bit of server side tuning and investigation, we re-enabled the Crucible Fire Team matchmaking feature yesterday. This does not directly reduce the chance of matching against pre-made fire teams, but does tweak the skill values of those fire teams to make it more likely that they find evenly matched opponents. Question, why won't you make a solo queue only playlist? Answer, we don't want to do that because it would split their population in an unhealthy way, making it less likely for everyone to find good matches. Furthermore, that would probably mean splitting their glory rank into solo glory and team glory numbers, and would much rather there be one single number to represent your prowess in the crucible. Question, why would you place me in a game in progress that you know I'm going to lose, ending my streak? Answer, there is no join in progress in competitive, so this can't happen for glory. However, we are working on a fix for Valor in the other playlist, so you won't lose your Valor streak that way. Now for me personally, the reasoning behind why they won't add a solo queue for glory is utter BS. I mean total BS, and I will say it people, it's majorly unfair on solo players trying to get that Redrick Claymore, or even just trying to play glory anyway. It's worse now than I can ever remember it being because of the changes and things to chase within that glory rank and in my opinion the address by Bungie is a BS1. Moving on people and Iron Banner is back next week. It begins Tuesday May 22nd and ends Tuesday May 29th. The game is controlled. The ways in which players can earn rewards has also been updated for Season 3. Saladin will feature a similar reputation system to Vanguard where players can climb the ranks by turning in Iron Banner tokens. Each reputation rank up will lend progress to unlocking desired rewards. It comes with all new weapons and ornaments looking good while the armors do anyway. Okay, so I'm going to move on and onto a supposed leak. Now, I've seen this on Facebook and I've seen it on Reddit, but take it with a pinch of salt. And it is what's going down Destiny 2 wise at E3. So it's rumoured that within E3 this year, we will see a reveal trailer for the full expansion. There will be also a presentation featuring the Bungie community managers and Nolan North. And we will also get a gameplay trailer too. The expansion is rumoured to be called Destiny 2 Ghosts of Nagasaki. Now people take this with a pinch of salt, I mean it could indeed be legit information, but until confirmed by a legit source, don't believe anything you see here. To me it seems fake, it sounds fake, and it most probably is fake, but I've said this in the past and it's ended up to be true, so you just never know people. But guys that's all the news from the past day or so. I do indeed look forward to Iron Banner next week and earning some of them sweet new ornaments. But on that note guys, I am out. So let me know what you think about the D2 leak. Let me know what you think about Bungie's response to the glory and progression within D2 since Warmind. Thanks as always for stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like truly helps me out. And hopefully people, I will see you on that next one.